And now, uh, Terry is going to join me, and we're going to run through this brief and very informative uh, canvassing workshop. And this is really good and important information for anybody in our movement right now, no matter what level you have chosen to help us at. Terry, take away. Okay, so we are basically going to run through uh, the petition and some rules that we have uh, for our canvassers. All right, our petition is going to include uh, the Attorney General's instructions to canvassers and signers, as well as an electronic signature um, from the Attorney General, our popular name, which is the Campaign Finance and Lobbying Act of 2012, and then the ballot title, which is the portion that begins an act amending, as well as the text of the actual act itself. So the popular name and the ballot title are what uh, has to be certified, and then the text of the act is the actual um, legislation itself. So from the Attorney General, this language will be included on each petition. And in case you're wondering, yes, that means that each petition is going to be really long. We are going to try and print it front and back on a very large sheet of paper. That may mean that you will have difficulty printing it yourself at home. If you want to, I think we're going to try and put it on a file that you can download and take to a printer. So in case that you want to print this file on your own, it won't be on 8 and a half by 11 paper. It will be on like this size paper, but it will be front and back. So it will be very difficult to screw that up. Okay, this, uh, these rules for canvassers uh, is something that's going to be on every uh, sheet. Um, the Attorney General has given us rules that must be included. Now, they're much shorter than the ones that we have. I'm going to do the next slide. Uh, and I'll do this one. Uh, I think it makes sense. Only legal voters can sign. Now, what that means is that when people come up to, we come up to people and we say, you know, are you an Arkansas registered voter? And they say, yes. We just accept that. If they say yes, they're a voter, we're, going, we're not going to do anything about trying to check them to make sure that they're voters. If they say that they are, we're going to believe them. If they go, hmm, I'm not sure, you might have asked them, well, if you're uncertain, you might want to check. <coughs> if they are indicating that they themselves don't know if they're registered, we can only accept registered voters. Uh, the Attorney General will be going through our signed petitions and checking with all the dating information that has to be written out. Um, not just the signature is needed, but the biographical data of somebody's address and their birthday. They are checking. And so if someone isn't a registered voter, um, they'll, they're going to know. And if I think, what, two or three on each sheet uh, are not registered voters, they toss that thing out. The whole sheet. The whole sheet goes away. I know. And this is why compliance is incredibly important, is because we kind of have to think of it like this. The Attorney General is not on our side yet. If, if this law passes, he has to defend it. But he wants to make sure that we're following all the rules. So he and his office are looking for reasons to toss out signatures, to toss them all up. And so we've got to be as compliant as possible. Um, yes, and then the last one is, that's really important, single county. Uh, if you're going to be a canvasser for us, I would like to ask you to either choose one county to register for or to maintain several separate petition sheets. Each petition sheet can only be from a single county. There are 75 counties in Arkansas. We have identified 15 that we think are the most important because we have minimums that we have to reach. But if any registered Arkansas voter uh, can sign. But if you have, um, if you're in Pulaski County and you run across someone from Lincoln County, they have to sign a Lincoln County petition. Does that make sense? Um, all signatures must be affixed in ink or indelible pencil by the signers in their own handwriting in the presence of the canvasser. You can't just hand your petition to someone and then even go in the next room. Ideally, you won't hand your petition to anyone and turn your back. Ideally, you will stand there and observe them completing it. Um, again, we don't want to have these, these petitions thrown out for not uh, meeting the criteria. Um, yes, question? What's indelible? Indelible pencil is pencil that cannot be erased. I would recommend the pen. Just stick with the pen. What, what, kind, of, what kind of pen? Yes, we are getting those. Okay. Crystal, go ahead. Black ink? Does it need to be black? Uh, I'm not yes. seeing any language that says it has to be black, but blue or black. I wouldn't go with red. Don't I wouldn't go with purple or green or any of those questionable colors, but blue, blue, black, blue, um, black should be fine. Yeah. The medical profession black is only one that says Is that right? 
Appreciate that. Um, let's see, rules for canvassers. Uh, we need to make sure that um, folks sign once and that uh, they do not sign anyone's name other than their own. Um, you're not uh, allowed to sign anyone else's name on a petition. That's okay. Um, and on the previous one, we don't need to go back to it. Um, each petition sheet only has room for 20 signatures. Say you get 20 signatures from Pulaski County and there's still people you want to talk to. You need to get a new petition sheet. You cannot just add signatures to it. Every petition sheet has to have all of that ridiculous language. Um, and so if, if you hit 20, good job. You're awesome. Put that wonderful, very important sheet of paper someplace it will not be harmed or damaged and get a new one. Um, also, if we go ahead and talk about um, how you can sign it, you can fill out the biographical information for someone, but they must sign it themselves. To, if you were to sign it, that is fraud and forgery and terribly bad, of course you're not going to do that. Um, but if someone says, you know, like for instance, a, we were thinking of doing some, some acting out scenarios, if you're talking to a mom of two outside of a grocery store and her hands are full, you can fill out her uh, birthday and her address, but she needs to sign it. That's the most important thing. Um, and you yourself, you, cannot sign your own petition. Okay, you will be signing it when you verify with the notary that you are this petition getter. But if you want to sign our petition, you're going to need to sign it on someone else's petition sheet. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, awesome, because that's really important too. If they see your name in the signatures and your name down with the notary, they're gonna toss that whole thing, all 20 signatures, out the window. How accurate does the biographical information have to be? What if they miss the address? That's a great question. Um, they're going to want to put not their P.O. box, but whatever address they are registered as a voter on. Now, you're right, sometimes there are mistakes, and I believe that the Attorney General has said that they're not going to throw it out if they've just got the wrong address. That's why the birth date is so important. So ladies, I know no one wants to know when you were born, but we need to put that information on there, because that's how they check. They've got a database of all the registered voters, and I'm certain that there is at least six people whose only job is to read through, is read through the petitions, type in the information, and check, check, check. That's all they do. So if someone asks, which address do I put down, say, try and put down the one that you're registered at. It's usually not a P.O. box, because they don't send voter registration cards to P.O. boxes. On page four, it says on your uh, rules canvassers uh, affirmation, a canvasser may sign his, her name on his, her own petition once. Now, is, is that, that contrary to what you just said, or do I not understand? It? I will defer to Terry. That is correct. I was going to correct, uh, correct her. You can sign your own petition once. You cannot, though, um, if you are a notary, mm -hmm. you cannot notarize the, the petition that you I have signed. That That's what I see that, too. I see that. Okay. My bad. Right. <laughs> That's okay. Yes, sir. Um, let me just, I've been involved in one of these before, and, and as a matter of fact, I'm about to The, the key element is that date of birth. It is, okay. Uh, that's what, when you, when you start looking to see, is this the right person, it's the date of birth that really knocks it down. Okay, because the, all of that other information, correct me if I'm wrong, all of the information, the address and the date of birth, all of that is to provide the Secretary of State with additional information to aid in yeah. verifying that this person really is like, that voter, is that correct? Quickest, the quickest way to verify was to put their name and their date of birth, and then that would pop it up, and then you could check the address and, and so on. Awesome. And that reminds me, please encourage everyone to write allegedly in, in not cursive in print, because that's another reason that they can throw out a signature, so that they decided that the printed name is not legible. If they can't read the signature and they don't know who it is, they'll toss it. Okay, question, can you say three bad signatures will kill a whole petition? I think, I don't have that for certain, but it's a percentage of the, of the 20 on the page. Percentage of the 20, okay. So if they want you just, basically, I think that's how it goes. If they're checking, and, and the first three are all bad, they're not going to continue checking. They're just going to let the whole sheet go. Uh, they, um, uh, can we, now here's what I suggest that each petitioner, when we get on, get on the internet, hit the Secretary of State site, and verify your 26. 
real quick and easy. They've got the database up there. Now, can, can so we, we cross it out ourselves? Cross it out ourselves? Yes. Does that count? That would that say yes. Thank you for pointing that out. If, um, for instance, and this happens, uh, someone puts down the wrong date of birth or the wrong date that they signed, or they, they're like, oh, I just screwed this up. Take a not a Sharpie. Sharpies are banned. We shall have no Sharpies. No Sharpies at all in this movement. They will all be found. There are Sharpies over there, and there are banned Sharpies. Um, only ballpoint well, pens. Ballpoint pens. And the reason why is um, when you draw that line through uh, a, a signature that's it's bad, you know, someone's kind of like, hey, I find Mickey Mouse because it's funny, and that, that's an evil person. You will mark them out just like that with a single line. Um, then what happens is if it is in a Sharpie, the Sharpie bleeds through to the other side and blocks out some of the text. And the Attorney General, or as Secretary of State, uh, the people in charge, um, can toss it out for any blocked language on the other side of the page. Thank so you. we're no Sharpies, they are verboten. But you're right, if you come across uh, a signature that's incorrect, or you decide to go ahead and, and verify those signatures before you get them notarized, and find out that one is not legit, you can just put a single line through it, and that one's not going to be checked. Add another question mark. Uh, for the sake of video editing, I think it would be best to get through this and do Q&A afterwards. Okay. okay, can you hold your questions? That would be great. All right, thank you. Oh, uh, we will go through this one. To know if they make a false statement on a petition verification form, shall <coughs> it constitute a Class A misdemeanor and subject the offender, that would be you, to a fine of up to $1,000 and imprisonment for up to one year. So, um, we're, in addition to not aiding regular populace and getting this on the on the ballot, you could actually face personal liability as well for falsifying these documents. So Alright, each petition will include the signature section. Uh, we're going to have a place, a place for the name of the county at the top so that that will help you to keep things straight if you're at a public event and you're, you know, you're running into people who are from Pulaski and Jefferson and Faulkner County so that you can keep all of those petitions handy uh, and, and Clear. We're going to put the name at the top, um, and this will be completed by the canvasser. All signers on the petition must live in the same county. Cannot stress that enough. The entire sheet will be invalid if one person is from a different county. Um, always carry more, uh, more than one petition with you in case you do run into people from outside your immediate area. And again, this is especially true if you're in a public venue. Um, we've kind of gone through this. Uh, the voter must sign. The rest can be completed by either the canvasser or the voter in terms of name, date of birth, residence, city, town, and date of signing. Um, we kind of talked about this as well. If you have good handwriting, you may prefer to do it uh, rather than have 20 different handwritings on your sheet. No sharpies. No sharpies. No, no, no sharpies <laughs> or other felt tip pens. Um, best idea, make a use of pen that you bring. That way you don't have people reaching in their purse and pulling out a sharpie and the next thing you know your entire petition is ruined. Tie it to the clipboard is a good point too. Um, keep a copy or two of the act handy. So if you have your, your petition, it has all of the act information on it and a place where people will be signing. If you have the petition itself like this, someone else can be looking through it while this person is signing. So you may want to keep a, a copy or two of the petition itself, I mean the act itself with you at all times. I'll blast through the next couple ones. All right, uh, basically, we, just, we already said this. Registered voters. Registered voters in Arkansas. Nobody from Texas. And if you're in Texarkana, you might actually want to check. Um, so that's really important, just Arkansas. Look, look up who goes next. This one? Oh, look, great. All right, ink, 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 ink. No pencil. I don't even know what indelible pencil is, so no pencils. Um, uh, <laughs> obviously, uh, you can sign your own petition once. You may not notarize your own petition. We are going to have notaries. Uh, and we're going to try and organize, as your, as your canvasser organizers, opportunities for you to come or for us to get you to a notary if your bank doesn't do it for free, um, so that you don't have to try and do that yourself. Um, do we have any notaries in the room right now? Fantastic! You are an important and wonderful person. We like you a lot. Thank you so much for being here. Um, we do plan to use you very often. Okay. Uh, this is, a, we're going to be talking about the canvasser and canvasser affirmation. This will be at the bottom of the signature page. So I want you to imagine you've got a box that has 20 lines in it with all of that biographical information. Underneath it will be the opportunity for the canvasser, if that's you, to sign your name and uh, your biographical information. Uh, and, and you have to make sure
make sure that that's all correct. Uh, let's see. They look like this. If you have any questions about that, you can talk to them about Okay, your signature, though, must be witnessed by the notary. So don't sign it until you're getting the, it, it notarized. So go back. You'll put I blank. That's where you'll put your name. Don't fill out the bottom part yet. Don't do it yet. It'll be very tempting to because if you have the bottom part filled out and you get to the notary, they'll, will they have to resign or will it just be invalid? It'll just be invalid. It'll have to be. Okay, so petitions are not valid unless they are signed by the canvasser, notarized by a notary. That's so incredibly important. Um, the notary must affix their seal. There will be a big blank square with a seal to go right there. Um, and uh, you need to make sure that the commission is not expired. It probably won't be, but feel free to ask if it's not rude. All right, multiple canvassers on the same side. I'm not Terry to get something. Um, two canvassers cannot circulate the same petition. So in other words, I couldn't say, here, Stephanie, sign this, and then hand it to Marie, and Marie go over and say, here, Crystal, sign this. You must maintain control of your own petition. Um, let's see, let me go through the next one. Ah, sending in the signature sheets. Uh, you cannot photocopy them or scan them and then email them to us or fax them to us. Um, the original notarized sheet must be either mailed to us or again, if we set up a, an opportunity to, for us all to meet with a notary, then we will take possession of them at that time. Or you can drop them off at an approved record populist drop-off location. We're working to uh, increase the number of these around the state to make it as, as uh, accessible as possible. Right now, this church and the Arkansas Community Organization's uh, office on Main Street are uh, available for us. How do you get more copies? Um, as soon as we have the uh, format approved, we will post these online. We're also going to print them up and make uh, plans to distribute them by mail or to deliver them to some of our more outlying uh, locations, especially when we get to the outer reaches, the far corners of the state, we want, we'll be uh, working with folks closely. And you're also going to be able to pick up copies, again, from the same locations. And we're working to, local, uh, to identify local printers so that we, again, can send that uh, file to them and you'll be able to go in and get copies printed off as well. Uh, let's see. Rules for gathering uh, signatures at voting places. One of the things we really want people to think, start thinking about is uh, the day of the Arkansas primary. We've heard anecdotal tales that as many as 50 or 60,000 signatures have been gathered by previous uh, initiatives on primary day. So just imagine if we could come close to those numbers. I mean, the battle could very well be won on May the 22nd. So uh, look at your calendars and identify your polling place and perhaps a couple of other polling places that you might be able to get folks uh, to join in and, and really man those sites. Um, some of the things that we want to do is we do have to stay 100 feet away from the entrance of the voting place. You can either measure that or ask the folks there. They will let you know, you know what, what is appropriate. 100 feet is not as far as you might think. So, uh, so you may be able to stand closer. You're also more likely to get folks to sign um, the petition after they voted. They have their minds set on what they're there to do. So on their way out might be a better time to approach them. Um, utilizing multiple clipboards can help you keep things moving along. And uh, let's see, oh, very important. We are prohibited by law from endorsing any political candidate while we're engaging in, in uh, activities for Record Populist 2012. So keep your, your activities separate uh, or you can jeopardize um, Record Populist. Okay, so when we actually need to go out and start gathering signatures at places, Matt and I are going to work on a calendar that uh, we can actually have, we're going to do this in a couple minutes where we start brainstorming some of the locations that we want to be able to canvas at. And Matt and I are going to work on getting permission for the ones that require permission. But no permission is required at voting places, so polling places, door to door, public streets and sidewalks, and any public area in your sporting events, concert festivals, that kind of stuff. If you're in a public location, you can do it, you can be there. Now, you might need to be very polite 
to the people who are running the event if they don't know what you're doing and why. Um, so you know, you have a right to be there, but we don't want to anger the people who, who have the event with all the people coming to it. Um, we do have to get permission at churches, places of employment, parking lots and businesses, schools, colleges, inside sporting events, and then state and federal parks and, and federal regulations. Um, so what we're going to do after we do this training and question is we're going to brainstorm some of the places and locations we should do that at, and then Mac and I are going to work on making sure we have permission at those places and letting you know so that you don't have to do it. You just know that the state fair has already been okayed. 